Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, to the Society Professional Journalists New England Chapter event, where I'm Mike, and joining me is Jerry Green, who has been who is an award winning journalist who for the Detroit News, and has been to all fifty six Super Bowls and has covered them. So, Jerry, thank you for joining us. First of all, thank you for joining us. Uh, how are you tonight? Uh, I'm pretty good. Uh... These new uh, technological things sort of baffle me. <laughs> I right. grew up using a typewriter, <laughs> and went and I sent copy from Super Bowls via Western Union. All right. So I guess I mean. So I guess let's start with the most recent one. What was it like covering the past Super Bowl, Super Bowl Fifty Six? What was it like covering that one first? Let's start with that. Uh, well. Covering that one was a uh, personal achievement for me because I I hit a milestone. I, I uh, growing up as a kid in 1941, uh, I watched Joe DiMaggio and his hitting streak. And uh, I watched another guy, uh, you don't know, Englishers might have heard him by Ted, uh, by the name of Ted Williams who uh, hit 406 that year. It was a great baseball year. And I wanted to get my streak to 46, uh, 56. And uh, I got my streak to 56. And that was very important to me personally. Uh, plus the fact that, uh, I mean, I, I go to uh, Super Bowls and I don't want to become a story, but I do. I mean, Newsweek magazine had a lengthy article on me in the current issue. Uh, the Detroit uh, papers, my local uh, suburban paper wrote about me. Uh, actually, the, uh, the news wrote about me a little bit, but the free person, which is, I, I understand, we're, we're competitors. But it was a uh, it was a quality assignment, plus the fact that uh, a guy I had watched here because I retired in two thousand four and he was drafted by the Detroit Lions in two thousand nine. Matthew Stafford happened to be playing for the Rams that day, and uh, just so happened by his request, he got traded out of here and right into a Super Bowl and a championship. So I guess the, for, the question with that is you talked about your 56 hit streak, well, Super Bowl streak. Uh, where and when did it start? I guess, how do you get into sport, the Super Bowl covering it? And how did you get into sports journalism in general uh, to cover the Super Bowl? So I mean, uh, both those, both it goes twofold, but really uh, what, how did you get into the Super Bowl and sports writing in general? Okay. Uh, well, I always use the phrase, I couldn't hit the curveball. So I decided to do the best, this, uh, the next best thing and become a sports writer. I, I'd love newspapers uh, from the time I was a kid, eight years old. And uh, I just uh, went in that direction. I, uh, for you New England guys, I happen to be uh, New England uh, trained myself. I'm a graduate of Brown University uh, with a master's from Boston University. And uh, actually I served in the Navy and I was at Newport, Rhode Island. So, so I have a lot of New England in me, first of all, and I, I got out of the Navy in 1956, looked for a job, finally got one with AP in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where I covered Michigan football, among other things. AP, uh, you cover everything, sports included. I, uh, I was heavy on sports. And uh, then I, 
I guess I was too heavy on sports because they finally brought me back after three football seasons in Ann Arbor, and I went. Uh, I soon became the Michigan AP sports editor in 1963. The Detroit News called me and asked me if I wanted to work there. I did. Uh, a couple of years later, I was elevated to pro football writer, and it was in time for the first Super Bowl. So, and from there on, I just kept going. So you started with the first, with the first, and then you you started with that first Super Bowl as the first opportunity, and then you just kept going to each Super Bowl after that afterwards. That's Super right. I, you know, I, I hit on the first and kept going. Was there any any point that you realized you're doing something special, like going to every Super Bowl? Was there any point you realized you were going, like you were going and you were on a streak? Did you did it hit you at some point? At any point that you were doing well, this for a while? I realized it was a streak going by ten. Pete Rosell, the commissioner, then had a party for all the guys who'd covered the first ten, and uh, and there were a lot of us, maybe 40, 50. Uh, and we kept going uh, through the years. The NFL stopped honoring us like that, but we, you know, there were times we we did know each other, and suddenly we were getting to close to twenty five. And uh, I wrote a book called Super Bowl Chronicles about the the, the first. 24 Super Bowls. Five years later, I updated it. After that, they didn't want it anymore. But the book has been a valuable uh, source of information for me through the years. And uh, I'm pretty well uh, blessed at my age that I, I can remember a lot of things. And I forget some things, but I remember a lot of things. And I mean, for example, yesterday I wrote something about Super Bowl. I'm not sure what the number was. It was three or four years ago. Actually, it was Super Bowl 50. And uh, Super Bowl 50, which was in Santa Clara, California. Uh, my internet connection is unstable. It's where I live. Uh, you got to read. Uh, you got to realize now that the internet does not come in here all, very well all the time where I live. And the Wi-Fi is, is terrible. Uh, we're working on getting it better. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, Super Bowl 50, uh, they bunched Jerry Eisenberg, uh, Dave Klein, who covered Super Bowl one for the New Ledger. Eisenberg was still working for Newark. Uh, Klein was not. And me in with all the fans who had covered 50 Super Bowls. And Lee, they made a, a big deal out of it. Uh, before the football game between uh, the Denver Broncos and Carolina Panthers, they wanted us to pose for a picture on the field. So we went down, we were in the tunnel, when suddenly here came the Broncos, sounding like Broncos, a stampede, running out to the field. And Peyton Manning darn near tripped over me. He would have knocked me for a loop, but if he could have gotten hurt, but he he was pretty elusive and dodged me. He got out on the field, and we went and took that mob scene picture. Uh, so, I mean, it sounds like you have a uh, a lot of these memories. A lot of these memories you have with a uh, Super Bowl. 50 you just mentioned you mentioned Super Bowl 10 which is the one full and swan catch do you have any particular Super Bowl memories that are your favorite any Super Bowl moments that stand out to you uh that are particularly like that that come to mind really any particular Super Bowl moments oh okay uh 
at Super Bowl one. The game was uh, played in Los Angeles Coliseum, which has a an entrance, a lobby, going to the locker room. And when I got down there, Vince Lombardi, the coach of the Packers, was there flipping a football uh, up and catching it. I don't know whether this is coming out on, uh, and catching it. And I, is that an NFL ball or an AFL ball? Each league used its own ball on offense. Uh, Lombardi didn't answer. Uh, I asked him again, Lombardi didn't answer. Third time, I is that an NFL ball or an AFL ball? I didn't know whether it was his own league's ball or an AFL trophy ball that he had. Uh, he said, it's an NFL ball and it runs a little bit better, it passes a little bit better, and it catches a little bit better. There, damn it, you made me say it. And then he went off and said the Kansas City Chiefs are not as good as the NFL teams. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys would, would be much better than they were, and so on and so forth. And it was a knock from the NFL down to the AFL, which uh, Joe Namath took care of two years later. So that uh, memory, I guess, stands out. Uh you mentioned with Super Bowl that Super Bowl one and with the uh, the the NFL with Vince Lombardi LA Coliseum, you almost gone full circle with uh, covering this past Super Bowl, which is also in LA. Uh, how has the Super Bowl changed since Super Bowl one, which was also with LA LA Coliseum, and now Super Bowl fifty six being in SoFi Stadium, but in Los Angeles? What would you say? How has the Super Bowl really changed for you, and what which ways has it changed? For me, or uh, well, first of all, the access now, in part because of the COVID, and in part because the NFL wants to shut things down a little bit for the me for the print medium. Anyway, uh, it, that's different. Access is different. Uh, I, I was very fortunate because the NFL enabled me to have a one-on-one, -on -one, which is very rare now, over the telephone with Matthew Stafford, uh, which is what I wanted. And I got that as soon as I got out there, we could go today. Uh, it's, uh, but most of the time, everything is on Zoom. And as we found out today, I'm not very good getting Zoom going. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, you're talking about uh, how the Super Bowl has changed for you, basically. Oh, the, uh... how the Super Bowl has changed? Well, the athletes are bigger and stronger and faster and uh, I think yeah, I think they're better now. Uh, not that I don't think uh, Bart Starr, who is quarterback of the Packers and himself as uh, Tom Brady did win seven championships. If you count the doubles in, uh, in Super Bowl one and Super Bowl two. Uh, pretty good. Uh, the players were, it's a much harder thing to cover now. Uh, I think there are 300 writers or so at Super Bowl one. Now it's been up to 3,000. I don't know how many were there this week uh, because of my age. I don't even go to the media headquarters anymore. Uh, they did not bring players into the media headquarters. Uh, they did not take it, us to the two training sites until Friday, two days before the game. 
those of us who wanted to go. And uh, it's it's different. Plus the fact that uh, I don't have I don't have the good times that I used to have. So okay, so yeah, the coverage really. You talked about the interviews you also had. Uh, you t- you talked to Matthew Stafford on the inter- on the phone. Uh, you said this past week. Uh, who are some of your favorite interviews? And also, who are some of your worst interviews uh, uh, with the Super Bowl or in general with football? Uh, who are some of your best okay. and worst interviews? They were. I mean, it started Super Bowl one. Uh, I flew out to LA, went to the Chiefs' place. There was Fred Williamson, who called himself the Hammer, and he was going to hammer the uh, the Packers. Well. He got hammered himself. Uh, that was good. Uh, I had the great opportunity, Super Bowl three, <clears throat> when Joan Namath was the, uh, the most sought after uh, athlete in America, the most popular athlete in America. And he was a night owl, things like that. Uh, the first day, which was a media day, a photo day, a picture day, whatever, uh, he was supposed to show up. He didn't. Commissioner Pete Roselle find, find him. Uh, didn't bother name it at all. The second day, everybody congregated at the Galt Ocean Mile Hotel in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And... Uh, Namath again didn't show up as he was supposed to. I looked out the window of the ballroom where the interviews were taking place and I saw Namath in a bathing suit walking. He sat down on a chaise long and started sunning himself. A lot of people gathering around. Uh, a few minutes uh, later, Cy Burek from the Dayton Daily News, I believe his face paper was. One of the guys who had covered everyone up until that time. So I came up to me and said, Namath has agreed to talk to a few writers out at the pool. Are you interested? And my response was, are you bleeping me? And I went. And that was probably the best exclusive story I ever had at a Super Bowl. Uh, through the years, there were really good interview guys like uh, Matt Mellon, uh, Jack Lambert, who was the middle linebacker for the for the Steelers, uh, Len Swan, Terry Bradshaw, uh, Hollywood Henderson from the Cowboys, so on through the years until well until maybe 10 years ago I, I i being a columnist i could write columns without going to the camps and i did because it started taking to- a toll on me i it's very interesting i I actually was really curious because uh, you mentioned Jack Lambert and a lot of people have this reputation of knowing Jack Lambert, I guess like mean Joe green as sort of this mean player, but you said he, he was one of your favorite interviews. Maybe you could talk, uh, talk about why Jack Lambert was one of your favorite interviews or why was he in particular? What well, he, he kind of stands out. What, what did you like Jack, about Jack Lambert? Jack Lambert, was, Jack Lambert said more outrageous things and, Joe Green, uh, he was more outrageous. He, he, so his quotes were better. That's what I was looking for. I mean, we're all journalists. We're looking for angles and and things that. Uh, I mean, the truth is, we look for the most controversial controversial stuff we can find. So you like Lambert for for that. 
Huh? So you like you liked Jack Lambert because of that, basically. He was very outspoken person uh, in the in the media. Yeah. And Matt Mellon was the same. And uh, John Riggins was uh, very good. John, John went 18 months without speaking to anybody in the media. And then he broke down and, and allowed one interview. And it was a mob scene. And somebody asked him the first question, how, you know, how do you keep going like this, John? He says, formaldehyde. And that, I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff I was looking for because, uh, you know, I, I became a columnist about three or four years after the Super Bowl started. And most of my Super Bowls were covered as a columnist. And I was looking for the the odd stuff uh, for Namath rather than uh, somebody else on the Jets, for for uh, Jack Lambert rather than Jack Ham, things like things like that. Uh, I kept looking all th all through those years for somebody from the Detroit Lions, and I finally found one. But he was playing for the Rams. Yeah. I'm the only writer who went through years and years and years who never got to cover his hometown team in a Super Bowl. And so uh, it sounds like the people who are outspoken, the people who are uh, who were open, like an open book, were the best interviews. It sounds like with that in mind, someone like Bill Belichick or a quiet personality or someone who doesn't want to talk to you would be one of your worst interviews. Okay. Who, who, are, who are the worst you, interviews then? Well, actually, uh, most of the time Belichick was. You mentioned him. Uh, I, had, uh, I had personal feelings against him because he was he was caught cheating he did things that he, and uh, i had been a naval officer he was raised in annapolis and cheating at the naval academy is you get booted out he wasn't at the naval academy but he was there he was in the he was in the environment and that uh, that upset me. There were other guys. Chuck Noll was a very tough interview, uh, coach of the Steelers. Um, a lot of other guys I never never got near. Uh, it's also I, I felt it was a dangerous assignment because uh, it wasn't too long before TV started coming in for the. First of all, they had the boom microphones that went over our heads, and they had the guys standing there, muscling for, muscling in for uh, an advantage spot. You get hit by a TV camera, you get uh, you get a uh, little bit of a bruise on your body, and, and you know I got some of those. Uh, I also threw an elbow or two. Sorry, uh, I think you got cut off for a second. But uh, were there so what? So that you so the interviews were tough. But was there any interview that you say you'd want? You wish you could have had, or wish you want? Is anyone you wish you could have interviewed, but you're never able to interview? Like you miss them, basically. Was there anyone that you could get? Uh, okay. Uh, through my hearing aids, I didn't catch that. Uh, is there any person that you wish you could have interviewed? You weren't able to get to the interview. You couldn't interview them because you 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 missed them as an interview. You wish you could have interviewed. Is there anyone you wish you were able to interview uh, before the I, Super Bowl or during the Super Bowl? I would like to have gotten into Joe Montana's head, and you know what what does he really think? Uh, one of the good interviews, incidentally, was Bill Walsh of the 49ers. 
because he uh, he dissed other people, and that was good. I mean, he he dissed uh, the general manager of the Detroit Lions, which played big in Detroit, and stuff like that. Uh, who else would I have? I would, uh, I, I had several sessions with Tom Brady. Uh, I remember the first time I saw Tom, he had pulled out a game in Ann Arbor at Michigan. Uh, I can't remember the opponent, but he, he rescued Drew Henson, who started the game and won the game. And uh, he, I, I was very impressed with his personality and with his glibness, the way he spoke the way, you know, for a college kid of 22, he was really sharp. And through the years, it was good. And, Yeah. And I obviously yeah. saw Tom at a lot of games. Yeah. So I, this is a different topic, but the same idea of covering the Super Bowl is how did you write your stories for Super Bowl one? How did you write them, publish them? And how has that changed from the recent Super Bowl, which I guess with technology, you, you uh, the new technology, but like, how have you, how did you file stories? How did you cover stories from Super Bowl one to Super Bowl 56? Like, how has that changed? How has that process sort of changed for you? Uh, if you got that. Okay. There of technological improvements. Uh, I started on a typewriter using a Western Union. to type it out and hand it, I don't know how much you can see on that, hand it over to a Western Union operator sitting next to you. Uh, then the next thing we had was a Xerox telecopier, which weighed uh, a lot of pounds and it, it went as luggage on the air. And we, we typed it out on the typewriter, took a sheet of copy, inserted it into a cylinder that spun around and sent it into the office. Then there was the, uh, the little, I forget what they call them, but they were about, they were about uh, less than two feet wide and less than a foot deep. And we wrote on those and they would go into the, right into the office with the copy where it was edited. Uh, the next there was the teleport, which were terribly unreliable. And Ultimately, we got the internet and filed by email, which I found to be extremely reliable. And once I learned how to do email, which was probably 20 years ago, I, you know, it was fine. I, it enabled me to write from home. And now with, with the internet, you can write from anywhere, basically. Uh, so I'll ask you the question, and then uh, we'll go to the public for if anyone has any questions. Uh, which Super Bowl particularly has been the most memorable Super Bowl? Which so, uh, You mentioned Super Bowl Ten, which I think stands out, Lynn Swan having that catch and the Steelers beating the Cowboys. There's a lot of Super Bowls that stand out, but uh, which Super Bowl is the most memorable for you? Uh, most memorable would be Super Bowl 51, five years ago in Houston, when, when uh, the Atlanta Falcons had a 25 point lead in the second half and, and uh, Brady caught them up, the Patriots up uh, with a terrific drive at the end of the game to tie it won the coin flip and took the ball down the field and, and won it. And a game Atlanta should have won. 
And uh, that's what Brady did. He won games that the other team should win. And uh, that, to me, is the most memorable. That, to me, is the best. Beyond that, the two most memorable, memorable games are Super Bowl three with Namath and Super Bowl one with Lombardi. Uh, that was the beginning, and I, I remember that pretty well. Yeah, I, yeah, I, this is a little off topic. We we have uh, some questions in the uh, group, but one question I want to ask you really quickly is: um, you mentioned Lombardi a few times. Is he, in your opinion, the greatest coach ever? Just out of curiosity, is he the greatest to coach the game, or is it some baby Bill I, Walsh or someone follow? In, in my opinion. Vince Lombardi was the greatest coach in any sport ever. Uh, he won a lot of championships. He was good. He was tough. Uh, the, the players actually in Green Bay worshipped him as tough as he was on them. I, I had a friend, a uh, dear friend of mine, I, I met it. He was playing from Michigan in 1956, Ron Kramer, who is a Hall of Fame football player in college, uh, all American. And uh, Ronnie and I would talk about Lombardi all the time. Uh, there are times Paul Horning was involved in the conversation with us. I mean, the players loved him, and uh, so I, he, he to me is the greatest coach of all time. Uh, I would rank after that Scotty Bowman, who was a hockey coach uh, for several teams, including the Detroit Red Wings, and won a batch of Stanley Cup championships. Uh, Don Shula. I'm prejudiced, Sparky Anderson. Uh, uh, I'm still prejudiced, Belichick. Uh, Belichick is, uh, you know, very close to to what Lombardi was in the NFL. Uh, Chuck Noll was a great coach. He's a different personality, but he's a great coach. Uh, Bill Walsh was a great coach. Uh, baseball managers in my lifetime, maybe Leo DeRocher. Uh, I said Sparky. Joe McCarthy when I was a kid. Uh all right, we got a question in the uh, group about media day, or basically a few days before the Super Bowl is when the players get to you get to be on a stage or in a area, and you get to interview them. Uh, how, how has media day? This is the question about media day. How is that day where you get to interview, go into a public area, and see all the players or coaches and interview them? How has that changed things compared to originally what it was look like, what it would be like? How is Super Bowl? How is the coverage well, when it beforehand? Started, uh, when it started, I sat on the grass with Dwayne Thomas, who didn't speak to the media. So we just sat there and waited for him to say something. Uh, he didn't until he said, What time is it? <laughs> okay, he was another Super Bowl character. Uh, it's become congested. It's got sponsors now. I don't know who sponsored the last one. I have. I haven't been to it for five years, probably because I don't get around as much. And uh, that's that's that part, I guess. Uh, but it, but it was crazy there. There were people who go there, there's some kid with a microphone, you know. Uh, he becomes more news than anything else. Uh, well, I guess the, like the question is, Is did the media day make coverage better or 
did it help did it help you out someone who's curious about getting sound bites and getting information uh did media day help with that like you were able to get to get up close with some athletes and coaches and get um get to ask them questions was, was that did that help it, out with that it, it helped some it was it certainly wasn't perfect but it, but it helped some you got to know who how guys looked and how guys acted and i think it was worthwhile uh i think basically now it's become for television outlets and uh, and they can get some sound bites out of it. Yeah. So yeah, it's more like a uh, an NFL sort of thing, I guess. Um, is two more questions to wrap it up. Uh, to wrap this up. Uh, one is you 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 turned you went to fifty six. You got to fifty six. Your fifty six gate. Your fifty six. That Joe DiMaggio had the fifty six hit streak. You got the fifty six Super Bowl streak. Like, was that the driving force to get to 56? Was, was there, what was, what was the driving? What was the big reason to get, to keep you going? What kept you going? What was your big driving reason? What, what kept you driving to go to uh, cover the big game, I guess, the big Super Bowl, the Super Bowl that is? Oh, the number's been meaningful to me since I was a 13 year old kid. And, uh, you know, uh, are most of you guys New Englanders? You never got to see Ted Williams because you're all kids. I mean, I was, I was 11 when I got Ted Williams' autograph. 20 years later, I was interviewing him. I mean, he's a great hitter. So those are, those are precious memories that I have. Uh, it's, you know, it's just, I cover a lot of sp different sports. I cover games at the uh, Boston Garden. Uh, when I was in school at uh, Boston University, I, I would go to games uh, in the Stanley Cup finals there, or semifinals, the Bruins were playing the Canadians. Uh, stuff like that, and then I was later covering it. So, you know, it's just a, a long series of memories that sometimes I have to get refreshed. So, so that's it. Uh, you mentioned Ted Williams. He actually was the last um, hitter to hit over 400 in terms of batting average in a full season, and he still didn't win the MVP. Joe DiMaggio won MVP with 56. My last question here is you reached 56, uh, you reached that milestone in Super Bowls. Uh, do you think you're going to go to 57? Do you plan on going to the next next year, or is it too far ahead to think of that? Or uh, what, that, what do you think that's about a, this? That's a question I've been asked several times since Sunday, last Sunday. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, it's becoming increasingly hard, mainly the logistics of traveling, uh, the hotel, you know, I don't get around. I'm not as spry as I used to be. Uh, I can't go to my left as well as I did. Uh, I, so I don't know. Uh, it's, it's possible, it's also not probable, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Are all your people in New England? Pretty, uh, pretty much, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, next year's Super Bowl is in uh, Arizona. You, I get, do you, you see yourself in Arizona in Arizona for the for Super Bowl Fifty Seven, or uh, do you you don't know yet, really? I at this time, I can't say no and I can't say yes. It's a question mark. All right. All right. No, no you are, you, are all you people on this Zoom? 
uh, Mr. Wang and Christian, who was here before. I caught a couple of them. Anthony Bambos. Are you all from New England? I, I think everyone is. Uh, I guess. I guess that's really. Uh, that's kind of the question I wanted to. End, we wanted to end off with. Uh, is um, whether we wanted to know whether you're going to run it back or not. Uh, but. Oh yeah, so this is an interesting question. Uh, it was reported that you needed a GoFundMe page for the Super Bowl. I, uh, you gonna elaborate on that? I don't know. Uh, sorry. Hold on. Well. <laughs> GoFunding page. Yeah, we see. You there? Yeah, are you there? All right. I think I lost. Michael. Hello. Hello, are you there? there? Sorry, I think I lost you for a second. Uh. We've done our 40 minutes. Yeah, sorry. I think we're we're basically wrapping up now. Uh so I Jerry, I mean, thank you for thank you for joining. Thank you for doing this, Jerry. It was really great to talk to you. Uh really enjoyed listening to the this. Uh okay. thank you. Thank you for joining. Okay. You're very welcome. Uh yeah. it's 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 been it's a very nostalgic for me being spread around New England. Yeah. Uh thank yeah, so thank you for uh doing it. I get and uh thank you everyone who joined for uh for this interview. It's been uh it's been a it's been a blast. Uh it's been really enjoyable and uh hopefully hopefully we could uh talk more in the fu in the future. Uh thanks uh thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Who is that? Kristen, I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining. Uh, hey, Kristen, who are you? Um, I'm a student at Roger Williams University studying sports journalism. Where? Uh, Roger Williams University in Bristol, Rhode Island. Uh, is there anybody there from BU? Um, okay, everybody. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make dinner for myself. <laughs> All right. All right. It, it's been it's been great. Yeah. Um. Really enjoyed hearing the these these stories. I. Uh, yeah. It's, okay. Good night.